how do you manage your time badly? Um, how do you allocate your time between work and other things badly? I also struggle with this uh, on a daily basis. I've never been able to figure out how to manage my time properly. I don't structure very much. Uh... Many of uh, uh, researchers in, in our community are very disorganized. Like me. I wouldn't say I'm great at it. This is still work in progress. Before deadline, uh, you just walk. My research bleeds over into my personal time and my personal time bleeds over into my research. The photographers work all the time. They are all the time loaded. I should not sleep because I should work. Okay, I need to be working. I need to be working. I think the worst thing to do is to both not work and feel horribly guilty about it. So being okay about Doing things that are not research, not work, is actually great. Never do too much. What are the important things for you? Do the things that you like and then do the things that you can't uh, escape doing. Well, I, I'm actually very, very good at it. And that's terrible. I, I'm trying to be this a little disorganized. Setting weekly and daily goals is a great way. I recommend plan to the future as much as possible. Uh, see, that's life, work-life balance. It's great, I think good. it's fantastic. Good. Good. Me with a not working internet, you with a kid. Taking time away from kids is, isn't, isn't time you're gonna ever get back. Their um, needs came first and foremost. Yeah, I tend to be almost too organized. I, I'm trying to be this a little disorganized so that I can be, you know, a little more spontaneous. In my case, uh, I've always been very OCD about, you know, keeping things clean and organized. And similarly, I think with time, maybe I was always uh, fairly good at not uh, wasting it. I mean, I do lots of non-work stuff as well, but... Uh, I tend to be always conscious of time. Um, yeah, in terms of advice, I think that, uh, or, you know, advice is too strong a word. In terms of a sort of friendly suggestion, I think that, uh, you know, just having like a broad agenda of what all needs to happen and uh, making sure that, you know, roughly at least we allocate the requisite time to each of these things. I tend to have this to-do list running in my mind all the time and I'm not happy that I've become like this. I mean for myself I feel like I'd like to not be like a, I'd like to be the driver of the vehicle rather than you know having this stupid timetable be driving me. If I feel like I don't know listening to a song. I should be able to just switch off stuff and listen to a song or I don't know, whatever, you know, reading a book. But uh, what happens is that now I have this list going on all the time. So this song or this movie, I mean, there are only particular times where it might happen. And I don't like that I'm being so uh, sort of, uh, sort of, I'd like it to be more loose. You know, this is a very difficult question. Um, you know, I also struggle with this uh, on a daily basis. You know, the, the thing to do here is to understand what is, you know, important for yourself and uh, also understand what is important for people who are working with you, right? Um, and based on this, you need to set the priorities for yourself and also make it clear to, the, to your collaborators. Once you have the priorities ready, then you can figure out how to allocate your time. And, you know, there are many time management tools these days that you can uh, adopt to help you with this. Uh, yeah, it's been really hard during the pandemic, especially um, to manage time. Yeah, I mean, I, I try to, the, the thing that seems to work for me is to like separate. Uh, I need to just, I need to just like block out time with kids. I guess before I had kids, everything was very nebulous. I worked whenever, it could be like three in the morning or something like this. Uh, it didn't matter to me at all. Uh, it was like when the work needed to be done, I would do it. 
And it's like when I felt up for doing it, you know, it's like when the conditions were perfect. But now, yeah, I can't get away with that. Um, I need to be awake during certain hours of the day. I need to be home uh, certain hours of the day, like cooking and like, you know, doing stuff, uh, cleaning, whatever. Uh, yeah, it's hard to manage time. I, I don't know. I always, I just, I, I don't do what I want to do. I feel like I, every day it's like, I make these like checklists occasionally. What I want to accomplish today is like, you know, I do like, you know, half of the first item on the list. And it's like, you know, <laughs> it's like, that's it. It's very depressing. Um, yeah, the thing is, like, it takes an extraordinary amount of time. Everything, I don't know, maybe other people are better at estimating their time. I always like, yeah, I can write this. Like, eight hours, I can write this section of the paper. Like, that's very generous. I know how exactly how the proof is going to go. I know everything. I already sketched it in my book, blah, blah, blah. Uh, like, I'm ready to go. It will be, I just need to write it. And then it ends up taking, like, three days. Uh, and not, you know, you know, not, like, uh, uh, afternoon and evening. Um, and so I'm very bad at tying this information. I think I was diagnosed with this problem though. Uh, so yeah, I don't, I don't have, I don't have good advice. Yeah. Uh, start early. Uh, unfortunately, I feel like, I don't know. Yeah. I've never been able to figure out how to manage my time properly. So I'm not the, I can't give good advice about that. As a cryptographer, uh, who's also a professional violinist, managing time has been a very integral part of my life. Learning to manage time efficiently is a process that takes time. However, if one can get better at this, then the benefits are immense. Setting weekly and daily goals is a great way to ensure that we allocate time to work on things that are most important to us. Learning to read papers quickly, making talks faster, or writing a paper faster are skills that take time to develop, and one can consciously try and build these skills during graduate school. Try to see how long it takes for you to do these things as you progress through graduate school. With time, I'm sure you will see a significant improvement. Um, so in some sense, like uh, cryptographers work all the time. So uh, we, we always work 724. Relevant advice maybe. Uh... Um, maybe a, more like a counter example, I don't know. Uh, but I have to think that from my impression, many of uh, uh, researchers in, in our community are very disorganized, like me. <laughs> so, so we work before the deadline and uh, chest by the deadline and uh, don't have very good uh, strategy uh, uh, to manage our time, but, uh, <laughs> but we can still survive. <laughs> Maybe not very politically correct answer, but so surely you will give up something. And uh, um, like uh, being maybe more hands off uh, uh, to advise student if I'm really too busy. And uh, uh, of course, I would say no to some uh, maybe like a review invitation and some PC invitation if if I I, I have kind of limited the uh, time, yeah. This, this works really strictly in, um, in phases. I mean, uh, one thing I'm trying, uh, which I'm often not successful with, is um, uh, not pushing, uh, let's say, the, uh, the, the tedious tasks sometimes of writing papers, right? First, you conceive all these uh, uh, cool ideas and you keep adding ideas, but then at some point you need to stop and start or, or writing. And uh, uh, one thing there is to try not to push this too close to the deadline. I mean, we have this natural tendency of really still trying to improve uh, our results that we have, uh, uh, but there... Uh, I mean, at some point, uh, far enough uh, from the deadline, you just need to say, okay, stop, uh, because unexpected things can and will, will happen, right? Um, now, with family, it's especially hard right now during, uh, during the pandemic. Um, I mean, I, I have a partner uh, who, uh, who supports me on, on this, and uh, 
yeah, uh, so, sort of taking time away from kids is, isn't, isn't time you're gonna ever get back. So yeah, um, there, there you, 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 you have to strike um, a ba balance. Maybe um, that's also as a junior faculty, some, sometimes things you need to communicate to your, uh, uh, to your, to your group that uh, you do still have a, uh, a whole lot of more uh, uh, obligations and duties to to fulfill yeah so uh, being super efficient is um is a function of how good you plan your tasks i recommend plan like to the future as much as possible of course it's always subjected to I don't know, last minute uh, changes but the further you see the tasks that you have, the better you can plan your time. And I know that the biggest hurdle, the biggest difficulty is when you have a big task and you don't know how to approach it. Just break it into smaller tasks. That's the secret. Try to plan at least the next month with respect what would you want to do every week See the, for instance, I, I have a file that I write down all the dates. It's not just putting them in my calendar. I really put them in, in like in, in a list. And so I have it in front of my eyes and then I see what I need to do uh, every week. The, the, the advantage of working in this kind of uh, work is that uh, is flexibility. So uh, it's not a you have to work according to standard office hours. So I usually work, um, uh, I mean, in the morning up until uh, uh, my kids uh, come back from school. I mean, recently it has been changed due to COVID and everything, but it used to be the case. Uh, I spent some time with them, we're eating lunch together and so on. And, um, and then I get back to work. At some point, uh, I have my 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 kids with with their homework, and so the, the the thing I'm trying to say is that since it's flexible, so you can uh, decide how to manage your day. You can break your um, task. Uh, I mean, you can break the hours into time slots where you you know you are going to work, and time slots where you know you can you want to spend with your family, for instance. Um, and I try to allocate time around lunch and dinner so I can spend time with them. Uh, so this is still work in progress. <laughs> in during my PhD, I had very clear cut times because we had uh, times uh, to to be in the office. So it was it was really of course when there was a deadline, I would work nights and weekends as I think everyone does, but. But if there was no deadline, then I was at work, I worked, I was at home, it was not work. It was um, it was like this. And, and then later this, uh, this, this faded a bit. And of course, now with the current situation where everyone's working at home, it's very difficult to get this clear cut. And then it's very easy to start working nights and weekends, even, even if there's nothing urgent in the moment, because there's always the feeling, oh, I didn't get enough done. I have to work more because I, I don't know. This is, I think, <laughs> this feeling we, we, we can always have. And uh, but I think it's very important. It's very important to take time off, and it's very important to to have uh, more clear cuts. And <laughs> I'm 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 trying to do that. Um, of course, because it's not it's not healthy on the long run. But also, I think it's more productive to actually don't be stressed all the time and, and and to actually have be in the state i mean often then still on the weekends you think about things and you have an idea but in a very like in a very relaxed state of mind and not in this i have to work harder i have to work more now so uh yeah i that's um, what, what i can say 
Yeah. Uh, so as a student, uh, the is mostly uh, allocating time between uh, studying uh, res for classes, uh, research, and personal life, and they are all very important things. Uh, and uh, the often, uh, personal life uh, is uh, <laughs> what gets neglected the most. Uh, you feel that it's not important. It's time to focus on work. But in order to do work well, uh, you need to be happy about your <laughs> life overall. And be in a good mood, especially for research. That's very, very important. So it is very important to find a balance. And, um, and beyond that, uh, different people have different, uh, uh, different approaches to this. Uh, some people find it easy to just come up with a fixed schedule and then just stick to it. Like, oh, I'm never going to do any work during the weekend or at night. Other people are better at, uh, um, uh, not better, they find it easier to uh, yeah, do, especially with research, they find it easier to do research when, whenever they are in the, in the mood to do that than of course, it, it happens quite often at all stages to some time to have an idea and really get almost obsessed with it and just do that and not stop for, for more time that you would normally do. But then you also need some time to recharge. Yes, it's more about... Uh, um, never do too much. If you feel that at some point uh, you spent too much time doing something, it's usually best to put it aside. Uh, and uh, you, you also your productivity goes down a lot uh, and you're better off alternating uh, and doing something else. And uh, um, so, yeah, I usually try to not to, uh, yeah, oh, exceed a certain, a certain quotas, except in rare occasions, like when there is a deadline or some other important, uh, important uh, reason to really push really hard on something. And also research, uh, it often benefits from being put aside uh, for a while and then going back to the same problem. So is, um, mm, yeah, so for, for this reason, uh, I usually try not to work uh, in a deadline conference oriented manner where the goal is to write a paper by a certain, a certain date. Uh, and I try to just move on with the research. And then when I feel that something is ready, then I try to put it down. But that's not always uh, the best strategy to be uh, productive in terms of uh, paper writing uh, with and publishing, which can be especially important important for, uh, for a student. Uh, another thing that I try to do, uh, um, more than just allocating time to work in general, is uh, to uh, balance the time that I put on a shorter term research project and longer term research projects. So there are certain things for which you can uh, pretty much predict how long it will take to get something and, uh, and finish the work. And there are other problems where uh, um, you really have no clue if uh, and when you will ever get to the end, uh, to the end of it. And it's important to find time for both type of uh, activities. I think I was very bad at this during my PhD. I remember there were times uh, that I was thinking that I should not sleep because I should work and I was doing it. Uh, <laughs> so I quickly realized that this is not uh, good for the brain and I don't suggest this to anybody. Now I know that breaks are very important. Uh, so what I try to do, I try to keep my weekends free as much as I can for external activities. Uh, and also during the day, I always try to find some time uh, for myself uh, to relax and then recharge uh, for the next day. I think that's always a challenge. Uh, I'm not sure I have I have the key to how to balance uh, uh, everything uh, between work and life. Uh, but I think you should uh, kind of consciously think about what are the important things for you and uh, make sure that you allocate time for what what is important for you and you should not be afraid to say that, okay, this day I work until that hour. And then afterwards, even if there are things that are unfinished, that will be okay. And I'll leave them for tomorrow and I will go and do uh, whatever other plans I have made. And of course, this is also 
not a rigid formula, right? Sometimes you're much more, much busier because you have a deadline or something is happening. So it's okay to put more time in finishing your work. Other times you, you can kind of shift the balance and decide that you need a break and then you, you need some time to not think about work. And that, uh, that should be also uh, something that doesn't leave you feeling guilty but you should you should look at it also as an opportunity to kind of refresh your uh, mind and uh, be open to come up with something new and interesting when you when you restart your work afterwards. So for time management, I I always felt that I'm doing a very bad job in it, uh, really very bad. But then I learned that many people around me feel the same. <laughs> So I feel that perhaps it is a little bit inherent in the in the fact that we are just uh, we have so many things kind of falling on us. I think that some of the advice that I like, I didn't always manage to <laughs> to uh, to, <laughs> uh, to do is uh, to. Um, kind of to divide the day not to do multitasking. Uh, so these context switches are extremely hard and I think the advice is limit your emails to a particular time of the day, limit other stuff to some other time of the day, start with the important things that you really want to make progress rather than the urgent things, otherwise you will never get to the important things. There seem to be a lot of uh, knowledge on that front and I would uh, I think that uh, um, going with it. I, I took a class at some point and I think I recommend uh, investing some thought in it. It's less about doing everything. It's more that when you, when just everything is chaotic, uh, it makes you feel bad, right? Perhaps you'll do everything eventually, but it won't feel as, as well. Uh, so it's not, my advice is not to manage your time well because then you can do more, but rather uh, to manage your time well so you can feel uh, better. So I'm, uh, I'm really kind of, uh, I became completely Californian at this point. So I believe in uh, mindfulness and doing everything you do completely and all of that because it makes you feel better. I'll tell you something uh, else. I think that people beyond feeling that they don't manage their time well, what I noticed with many people is that they feel that they are lazy. And that's even, uh, so you see all these successful people, me including, and they, we all feel that we are lazy. And the point is to understand uh, that some of the times that we feel that we're not doing anything, we're actually doing very important things. Uh, and that uh, some of the uh, kind of procrastination uh, plays a role. And uh, partly it's because we have so many things to do. If we do everything very early, we'll just invest more time in it. So doing it the last minute uh, bounds the amount of time we're doing things. Um, we are not, uh, we, <laughs> we are working uh, hard. In fact, at some point I wrote a blog post about uh, how we work, that I titled, are we working too hard? And I think the answer is yes, we are working too hard, too hard, to for even for some of the research that really needs uh, us to be able to go kind of to the side and, and or look at things at a higher level. And uh, if you are just kind of doing that, 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 you will never get these insights that are a little bit um, beyond. So, so being okay about doing things that are not research, not work is actually great. Um, I feel that um, family is is a high priority, probably the highest priority, and um, and the good thing about kids, they don't wait for you to decide. I mean, they they need you, then and then and that becomes a priority. And my my first uh, child was. Uh, I was crying a lot as a baby. And uh, I thought about it as a way of telling me, you know, being a father is not a hobby. 
you need to be here for me. It's it's hours on hours, and that's your priority. So I think that uh, whatever need to be done with the family is the priority. And on the other hand, so for me, the the research is kind of like what you do for yourself. So you cannot just to be a good family person. You cannot just do that. You need to do something else. It's also a good lesson for the kids that you have a life uh, apart from them. Uh, so, uh, but but on the other end, it can it it endless, right? With academia, you can uh, invest 24 hours a day. You can invest 48 hours a day. You can say yes for more and more things to do. Um, so. So that's why I give uh, the family the priority because that bounds the the industry. I think the main main thing to do is to learn how to say no uh, to uh, to opportunities. Sometimes it's things you really want to do. It's not uh, uh, something that you want to avoid. But you need to understand you cannot work with everybody around you. You cannot advise any stu every student that you want to advise. You need to bound it. And that's that's how I, I feel uh, it should be. Uh, I feel that uh, it's a very long career, uh, and uh, you cannot burn yourself uh, with just working and working and working. You, you should uh, pace yourself. How do you manage your time badly? Um, how do you allocate your time between work and other things badly? Although being able actually I, I feel that actually when you relax you actually think better so if you're kind of like all wound up and doing lots of stuff and work and you need to kind of have some time to actually have ideas go for a walk go for a run go for a cycle go down the gym um, or do whatever you do because actually whilst you're in that kind of zone of doing completely nothing actually you're working your brain's thinking you never, your brain never turns off so actually you, sh and you shouldn't feel this kind of Protestant work ethic that you have to go out and work all the time um, because actually when you're relaxing you're still working this is kind of like one of the weird things about research is when you're doing nothing you are still working yeah um, um, I, I, I guess um, so uh, time management is definitely difficult I'm not I wouldn't say I'm great at it um, I um, uh, so I have a two-year-old daughter, almost three-year-old daughter, and uh, ever since she was born, I definitely had to scale down uh, my you know my time on research by some amount, and uh, and I'm and I'm happy I did. It's you know that's 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 uh, there are other things in life other than uh, other than research, so uh, uh, so it's it's uh, you know it, it's important to have a balance. Um, I think this balance is different, different stages in life. I think when I was a postdoc, I really, you know, had a, devoted a lot more time to research than maybe a little, maybe, maybe too much, maybe like uh, didn't make as much time as I should have for, uh, for other things for life. But, uh, um, uh, but you know, at, at different points in, in, in life, I think this balance changes, but, um, um, but it is important to to have some balance. So I don't know if I have really any any great advice <laughs> on that front. <laughs> it's you know, uh... I put one hundred percent of uh, my the time that I allocate to doing work to work because I don't distinguish between if if work is uh, on a theoretical problem that I think that is interesting for my self development and eventually contributing. And the actual need that I need uh, this week to do something in the company and uh, to do it. Of course, the priority goes according to the urgency first. Uh, uh, the needs of sometimes the needs of my co authors and uh, deadlines and things like this also. You want to concentrate and finish something on time and things like this. But, but, but in any event, I always uh, take sometimes off the main one or two problems that I'm working on, and, and I think of off off topic, and then go back to the topic. It, it is helpful for me to get out of it and come back and like 
like a spiral. I go in and out, in and out, and sometimes it's it's helpful. And so I don't I don't I, I don't know how I uh, schedule my time with all the the need for to contribute to services of the community and uh, services uh, at work and uh, and uh, um, and uh, the need uh, to talk to people that on, on things that are not necessarily contributing directly to work like I'm doing now then uh, sometimes I uh, find myself over committed and that's not good but but uh, I think um, people who are uh, somehow good in, in the profession, they are all the time loaded in some sense. <laughs> yeah, very, it's, very, it's very hard. You, you, have to, you, have to, you have to do your work. You have to do the the re research which is like uh, exploratory to try to do to en to enhance work and uh, uh, talking to people about uh, joint projects and things like this but then doing all the <clears throat> all the service like um, <clears throat> i'm on the board of iacr for example so you you know you can you can treat it like a nothing, but actually, if you want to be effective and help the community, you should really put some time into it. And uh, this is just one example. I mean, uh, uh, writing letters, promotion letters for for people in the field, you have to do and 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 all these all these type of things. So it's normally it's hard under Corona. It became sometimes almost impossible to manage time, but but uh, it's a, it's a tricky juggling exercise, and sometimes sometimes I fail. I I I I, I see that I'm overcommitted, and I'm I need to I need to, to un uncommit. <laughs> and the earlier, the better, of course. Under no circumstance, if you want to stay in uh, research, you should give up uh, activities uh, related to research, thinking about problems, even though it's very unstructured. What does it mean thinking about problems? It's everybody does it in a different way. And uh, uh, thinking, thinking about research problems, thinking about uh, the next things uh, and so on. It's always important to put the amorphic, not well-defined research uh, issues as part of your time allocation, and this guarantees that you stay you stay in the business of of research. And uh, over time, you develop this naturally. You kind of do other things, and su suddenly something research-related uh, draw your minds, and you say, "Oh, I have to get to get to it." So I either get to it immediately, or I write down, you know, look at this paper, this 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 idea, and so on, and I go back to it. Yeah, and 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 when when I had students, there would, there was need to, there was always needed time to. To talk to students, to uh, direct and redirect them sometimes, and uh, it's a commitment, and it's actually a very enjoyable part of research, working with uh, students. Another question: How do you manage your time? There are some excellent people on this call to address this question. <laughs> And the question <laughs> is, um, first of all, within the work, when do you do research, do other um, uh, things that you need to do, committee work, things like that. And then also between work and other things that you want to do, what time management do you do? Tal, do you want to start? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a big expert on time management. <laughs> um, exactly. 
So my first advice is don't do anything at all until the very last minute. (laughs) (laughs) No, really, I mean, time management is my hardest problem. It's really hard. I'll say something about the second question you said about uh, between work and not work. I strongly believe that you should not feel like you have to be consumed by work. So I guess our job, this is both an advantage and a disadvantage, which is there, it's not a nine to five job. Uh, and I guess there's some people I know who did make it into a nine to five job, but I am not able to. And this goes both ways. So, you know, I do take days off, which are intentionally days off with no work at all, either to do some concrete, amazing, fun things, or even just to relax and do nothing. And I think that's fine. But I also find myself working in the weekend and at night, and it's indeed hard. I don't know what advice I would give, but I think you should, I think the worst thing to do is to both not work and feel horribly guilty about it. I think it's better not to be guilty about it and to do, I think vacation, time with family, time to rest, time with friends, whatever is all very important, even for work. So you should not feel pressed to work all the time. Um, Work is hard to not think about, you know, in the, so I don't know, my, I, I, I'm very deadline oriented, um, which I don't think is a good thing. So my advice is not to be deadline oriented, to plan everything in advance and do it. But it's hard for me. I guess at this point I managed to, I learned to forgive myself and, you know, I'm strong in some things and weak in others and time management is one of the weaker parts. So I'm interested to hear what other people say. Okay. Uh, but you didn't address, okay, I'll let others speak and then we'll see about addressing be, in the work what to do and not what to do. Oh, how to, yeah, yeah, I do have, I do have, I do have something to say, uh, what not to do. So one thing is, um, it took me a long time, but I think everybody gives this advice today and I'm very, uh, I agree with it strongly, which is learn to say no to things. I remember, the f- I like literally remember the first time I said no to something. It was like I was invited to a program committee. I remember the first time I said no, and it was so hard for me. And now I think about it. The reason I said no is I was due with a baby around the time of the work. This is such an obvious no, but it was so hard for me to say no. And also I was old by then. So I really never said no before that, which is a problem. Now I say no a lot. So one big advice is to say no. And the other advice is within work, how to decide whether you do committee work or this or this or that. It often, the the bad thing is you just, whatever happens, you do like somebody pressuring you, you got an email or something. I think the better thing to do is to think for yourself and make your own priorities instead of just doing whatever happens. Um, So these are two things not to do, which is not to say yes to everything and not to just do what happens, but think a little bit what you, what your priorities are. So actually, I have something that you, Dalindil, just told me in GTEx a couple, uh, like a week ago or so ago, which is so, I found so helpful. He said, here's when I say yes. If I'm asked to be in a committee, but that didn't start in six months, but started today or tomorrow, will I say yes or no? And if I would say no, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to have more time in, you know, in six months. Time doesn't kind of generate itself. So think about what if you were asked to do it like in a week or two? Would you say yes or no? And because it's very easy to think, oh, it's, you know, it's in six months. By then I'm going to be done with my deadlines and, you know, my projects will be over. And of course, you know, these things uh, pile up. Um, but I wanted to say also something not related. I think it's very but important yeah, to understand. But yeah, yeah. then the answer yeah. would always be no, because I never have time. Mm-hmm. So, but you do have to contribute to the community. First of all, to contribute to the community because you send paper to conferences, you need yes, to review you're papers right, you're also. Right. But not just because of that, but also because it's good for you. It's a learning yeah. experience. It forces you to read. Um, it's good on your CV for various things. Of so, so I, I'm, I'm not sure what, that that I mean, There works. are things like writing letters, which I feel is my job and I cannot say no to, I mean, yeah. depending on the person. Yes. And it's very, very very important for somebody's career. Yeah, these are you can't say no to. So some things you just can't say no to. But I think also you need to be aware that if you say yes now, something else may come up soon that you would, you know, I guess here's, let me give us a setting that you need to keep in mind. Maybe you're asked to be on some program committee that you don't really want to be on, but you feel like, okay, but I should be on a program committee. But keep in mind that there is a chance that in two months, 
And for each person, it's different, right? But you just need to keep in mind that you'll be invited to a different program committee, that you want more. And then you need to keep in mind that, like to prioritize things and think kind of, you need to think essentially probabilistically, right? What's the, you need to think, uh, I need the recording. Uh, you need to think kind of probabilistically. Uh, see, that's life, work-life balance. It's great. I think good. it's fantastic. Good. Good. Me with the not working internet, you with the kid. Here a kid in the background. I'll hide her. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, but what I wanted to say also, which is uh, related to your question, I think it's very important to understand for each person their own, when what's their strengths and weaknesses. So for example, for me, I know that I'm most productive, like I'm most crisp and uh, uh, clear, clear thinking in the morning. And I try to make sure that the three hours of my, you know, from the morning, the first three hours, I have no meetings. I don't always succeed, but I really try. And to the extent that I'll wake up at 6 a.m. to make sure that I have my three hour, <laughs> a, you know, window to work, to think. Uh, and there's some work that requires less kind of, you need to be less, uh, a, you know, chada, um, sharp. sharp, focused, sharp. sharp. Yeah, sharp. thank you. A little less sharp and some things you need to be very sharp. So you know, you need to organize your day in a way that work that, you know, require you can do when you're a little more tired, you'll do it then and work where you really, really need to focus, like, especially when you're, you know, fine tuning a proof, <laughs> you know, you do it in the time that you're most focused. And so that th that's something that I think is very important. So I want to go back to something that Tali brought up, Tan Walking, about the um, um, uh, con context switching. So I, I'm actually very, very good at it. And that's terrible because I'm so good at it. I do it a lot and it's clearly the wrong thing to do. So, I mean, my, my advice would be to like have a whole day, at least one day a week, maybe two, where you actually can just think about research and maybe, I don't know, have lunch, obviously, but, uh, but not context switch. For me, that's the worst part. And of course, as you get, as a student, I think you get the privilege that you don't need to do so much context switching. As we grow more, uh, you know, and we have more responsibilities, there are the letters of recommendations, there are the committees, there are the students, there are the postdocs, there's the grants. It's actually, I think, one of the, the worst thing uh, that academic institutions do. You know, they hire people because they're good researchers, usually, and then they make them do all the stuff which they are not that good at. It. And uh, the amount of time that remains for research is very small. It makes no sense really makes no sense. If you think about the amount, number, the amount of duty that you, that you need to do a ratio for time to think, it, it makes no sense that you would necessarily get the best out of these people. So I think there are some very rare places, but some such places exist where you have tremendous staff, even staff that writes grants for you. And they, do, they, they know how to do it well, given, given the right guidance, but it's extremely rare, certainly very rare in the United States. I haven't seen it. There are claims that such things exist. Uh, but if you really think about why you particularly hire the people you hired is for their creativity, for their ability to focus. And, 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 and we have a tendency, I think as women probably more than men, but everybody has a tendency to do what's easiest. And if somebody distracts you, in some sense, it is easier to get distracted and, and to do what is demanded of you at that moment. So, so, uh, so we do it, and that, but that's not where we're going to get our best work at. So if you understand that and you believe in that, then you figure out your own schedule of how to make sure that you have quality time. And Yael, I guess, figures it out. She's a superwoman, and she can get up at six and think till nothing, but not everybody can yeah. <laughs> uh, Okay, I have a couple of follow-up points to some of the different things that were raised. Um, one kind of going to the multitasking and everything, I, I, I agree with that. And, and also uh, tied with how do you schedule your day? Um, it's, a, it's an important thing. Even if I have, you know, if I have five hours that are free, but they're here a little bit here, a little bit there and so forth, it's very hard to get certain tasks done, like really deep thinking uh, research. So for me, the best times when I'm doing research are when I have, you know, half day or a full day where I can just go and, and kind of think without the pressure of, oh, I need to be in this call in 20 minutes or something like this. Um, another point, so Tal raised this issue of uh, the worst thing, and this is really, I think, I really agree with this, the worst thing of the work-life balance is when you're not working and you're feeling guilty about it. 
uh, I used to do this a lot, especially as a student and as a postdoc, where in the weekends I would constantly think, okay, I need to be working, I need to be working. And I would sort of not really be working, um, and, but I would be thinking about it all the time, like not even productively, but about the fact that I needed to be, I should be working. Um, and really and what I, I should I thought have done, you worked all the time. I thought you actually worked all the time. <laughs> but I, I, I did work a lot <laughs> for those hours when I was not working, you know? <laughs> um, but, but I think what I should have done is said, okay, I'm going to take these hours in, in, you know, the first part of the weekend or something like that. And I'm going to really sit and give myself a good environment and I'm going to work. And then I've earned freedom or whatever. And, and then I would be able to cleanse myself of this. I would go have some fun and it would help me recharge for the next time that I was sitting down and trying to think instead of thinking, oh my gosh, I spent, I wasted all this time as a weekend not working. Mm -hmm. um, so now I'm, I'm approaching my next work session with this, this stress or fear. So this uh, is something that, that I, it, it's a little hard to execute, I think, but it, it can make a big difference. For those of you with kids on the call, how did you uh, balance things when there were also kids um, uh, that, as we know, demand their time? It's not uh, really an option. What do I have to say about that, okay, is that it's very difficult, okay? And because kids consume a tremendous amount of your energy, your emotional energy, and your time and your commitment. And uh, even when, you, uh, when you're working, I think that it's true for a lot of us, certainly was true for me, is that if there's a problem, if there's an issue, you think about it in the back of your mind and it bothers you and you can't, stop, and it really, it's all consuming. And in, in the final analysis for me, that was certainly more important than, um, than research. And uh, so be it. Uh, so if you're lucky, you have children that don't consume all of your time, and if you, or let's put it this way, if you're lucky, there are times <laughs> when your children don't consume all of your time. Uh, that could happen before you have children, that could have, happen if you never have children, and that could happen uh, because life, you know, it's a cycle, and sometimes it's the man more and the man less, and obviously you want the partner that you have is helpful, if you have a partner, and that you have to be lucky for that too. So. You know, that's not really advice, right? The advice is to be lucky. Well, I, I actually, I, I think I actually have advice, which is, uh, I agree with you, Shafi, completely, that when things go, are going well, it's e much easier to just focus, you know, uh, but, but that's actually, I mean, it's easier to focus on research and when things, there's some problem or, you know, some worry, then all of a sudden, you know, the focus completely shifts, uh, which is a good thing. I mean, that's part of the good thing about our work is that, you know, you have kind of freedom. Also, you know, you can have take the freedom to, sh to you know, to take care of, of things at home if you need. Uh, but one thing that I found for me really helpful when I started having the kids is really to focus. So I, I had to think to myself, I, I can't like my time is limited. What is the most important thing for me? And I'm not going to waste my time. So from the moment my kids were, were born first, I did no cleaning whatsoever. And, you know, for example, we were the type of home that if you bought us a, a toy, you know, with more than three pieces, it was a one time thing because I had no time to run and try to, uh, I, I like my, you know, I, I, I prioritized what was important to me, uh, which, you know, and therefore sometimes, you know, my kids uh, were not well-dressed or, you know, their clothes, you know, were like two years behind, but still they're, you know, the age of six, what clothes of a kid who was four and so on. A, but, um, or my daughter now here is, is in Israel, super hot, still she doesn't have flip-flops, uh, work in progress. Um, but but I, get, I think for each of us, there's something that are important for us, you know, and these uh, I, I try to make sure that I do. Um, and the rest I, I delegated. And when you delegate things are don't come out as perfect as you want, but you know, you need to prioritize. Yeah, and so the house was dirty all the time. I had a cleaning lady. I have, but if I have, you can't afford one, what do you do? I, I would make the house be more dirty. More dirty. More I'm dirty. Dirty. But I gotta if, say if, something. I gotta say something that the, having Maya on the camera a minute ago was perfect. Because the point is that no matter what you do, they complain, okay? So one has to keep that in mind. They complain anyway, okay? <laughs> Wait, I'll that. go and bring Dana. I'll bring Dana. Sure. I have to say, though, it's, you know, the proof is in the pudding at the end. You know, we have great kids, so. 
<laughs> but that's we're just not because perfect. they're they're naturally great. They would grow on anything. No, I doubt it. Um, <clears throat> like my personal life. Well, that usually is what's meant by not work related. <clears throat> Um, I don't know. Um, I, I guess uh, my research bleeds over into my personal time and my personal time bleeds over into my research. And there's real, uh, I, I guess I could use more structure in my life, but um, um, it never seems to happen that way. <laughs> when do you prioritize personal things over work and when the other way around? Well, I guess when I have uh, work deadlines, the work becomes a priority. And when, uh, I don't know, important things come up in my personal life, I just prioritize that. I'm, I'm very good at ignoring uh, other things and just focusing on the one thing that I'm paying attention to. So, um, <laughs> so I'm, I simply decide what's uh, most important to me at the moment and I do that. <laughs> Um, anybody else want to answer that question? I'm, I'm a very non, I'm undisciplined person. You're a what person? Un, undisciplined. Non-disciplined. Undisciplined. No. Craig, un or non? Un. What? Un. Undisciplined? Okay, Google. So you're undisciplined. So what does that mean? How does that uh, exemplify itself in your oh, life? I mean, I, 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 I don't structure very much. Uh, when, 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 when you have a family and uh, then you are more, uh, more dependent uh, on, on these other, uh, other elements in, in, in your life that can take certain times in the day and you work you 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 work the, um, depending on, on, on these times uh, now that I have more time I for example a half an hour before this call I sit down to finish uh, watching uh, an episode in this TV series that I'm watching now. Uh, but is this more a corona time thing or also before? Well, it is Corona because in the office I would have not, uh, <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I could have done it, right? But yeah, I think it's, it, it is a Corona. Yeah, yeah, the Corona really actually uh, uh, made these, these uh, transitions between work and not work much fuzzier. And now I'm going to finish the call and I will have a call with a friend of mine. Everything is a mix, everything. But anyway, I, I don't think that this is, uh, uh, this is quite specific now. Uh, and, yeah. and, and the young students, well, no, I trust this, many young students don't have a family. So I would say that uh, it, is, it is good to try to put some structure uh, in your life, uh, you know, dedicate some pre pre-established times uh, to work, uh, making sure that you're doing other kind of things. Um, that's not what I do, but uh, it's a good a, a good idea to do it. What, what about what about you, Tal? What about me? Uh, how did you, what was the question exactly that you okay. asked? How, uh, how do you allocate the time between your work and... Uh, so Tal, how do you allocate your time between your work and, and personal non-work life? So there's no question that things have shifted over time when I was um, a young mother and I had, uh, sorry, I was not a young mother, when I had two young kids. <laughs> um, this dictated a lot of the things and I had to go home um, in preset times because I have to pick up the girls and their um, needs came first and foremost. So there was no question that that was the first priority uh, during a certain part of my um, 
research life. And then when they grew up, um, I love to do many things. I love to go to the theater. I love to dance. I love to eat, unfortunately. Um, so all these things, I uh, would try to allocate time. And I do give importance to these things. But of course, if a deadline would come around and there would be need uh, to devote uh, endless time to whatever needs to be done at that moment, then I would do that at that time. But I try to um, somehow do both things, both um, my work and my other things. And maybe it did result in me having less papers and so on, but I'm at ease with that. I'm okay with that. I feel that I've made my choices in a way that I'm happy with them. Yes, Hugo? Perfect. <laughs> Couldn't be better. <laughs> Shai? I guess the same answer as the as my answer, previous answer. I mean, do the things that you like and then do the things that you can't uh, escape doing. Uh, I mean, and seriously, that's different for different people. I mean, uh, I I also think that uh, earlier in my career, when my kids were younger and things, it was more important for me to come home at a given time and, and uh, well, maybe I had to even. Uh, uh, but, and, and, and honestly, the load, I mean, that might not be true for everyone, but the load, how much of your time you actually have available to you to do things, uh, that tends to, I mean, the load tends to grow as your career moves forward. I mean, definitely work-wise, I have a lot more things to do now than I did uh, 20 years ago, and then and, and it's, reasonably monotonically increasing um, but that's it might be just uh, you know artifact of the way i'm handling my career or, or whatever but uh, but it's definitely uh, a phenomena that as a young person maybe you don't appreciate but uh, but it, it does um, so put boundaries i guess is the, is, is the uh, uh, advice there uh, but yeah i mean the how do you partition your time between times that you're working and times that you're not working. Do the things that you enjoy uh, outside of work as long as you can afford them in terms of time. Fabrice, you're still young. But how does a young person do it? You mean balancing? I don't have a I don't know solution balancing, either. how distributing. You don't need to be balanced. But I mean, as I said, before deadline, uh, you just work. And apart from that, uh, I don't have a good, good solution. Like what I know, see if that can help you, uh, the way I wrote my thesis is that during the day, I would just procrastinate on doing things that are actually kind of work, but not related to my thesis. And I would start writing my thesis maybe at 6 p.m., 7 p.m., until maybe 2 a.m. for uh, several months. Or that, no, not several months, several weeks. That's how I wrote my thesis. But that's, I, that's not something I recommend, but uh, that happened, I guess. <laughs> 